So in this workshop, we'll be looking at tracking changes in Microsoft Word. And I'm going to start with sort of the web based version and then show you how it's also done in the uh, desktop version. So to get there, I'm going to open up a new browser tab here. And I'm going to type in office.com. Uh, this computer already has me logged in, but you would typically just log in with your net ID at msstate.edu and then your net password. And this takes you to your Microsoft Office 365 homepage. And this is where I can find these are documents that have been emailed to me, uh, things that I've created, things I've saved in my OneDrive. Uh, down the side here, you'll see that you can jump into your Word documents. And so this is, I can create a new blank document here at the top. I can find some templates. Um, these again, things that people have emailed or shared with me. Um, and then if I go, uh, down to OneDrive here. So again, skipping over Excel and PowerPoint and Outlook, and then just going to OneDrive. This is also where you can go in and find all of your documents. And if I scroll down, you'll see a big list of documents that I've created here, just document one through, I think I've gotten up to 21 so far. Um, through either of these methods, uh, you can share your document with someone else. So um, with track changes, there are a couple of different elements to it. Uh, the track changes option, turning that on and off is fairly easy, but then uh, what I like to focus on in this workshop too is how you share this with other people. So um, I'm going to go back to, so notice that this opened another tab here at the top. So I've got Word and then I've got uh, my files in OneDrive. I'm going to close this tab and we'll start from the Word side. So if I create a new blank document here, uh, this will then, so it's, you see that this is now document 22. Um, and I'm going to just put some text in here. So this is just how you can generate some random text. I'm doing R-A-M-D, over and Z's, and I'm going to do, we'll do 25. Close parentheses so that we have lots to look at here. And if I scroll up here at the top, so you'll see um, this just puts in some information here uh, or some text. Close out the little editor there. And right here in the middle, you've got this editing here. And so editing, this is where you're working on creating a document by yourself. Uh, you can also share this and other people can collaborate as well. Um, reviewing uh, switches to where we're then just making suggestions. Um, so you'll notice that then that uh, actually turns on track changes. And then at the end, you also have viewing. So if I click on viewing here, it switches to a different view. So you'll see my tools go away here at the top and I can scroll. You also uh, will see your page breaks better in this online version. And then to get back to editing this document, I look over here at the uh, top right. I can then go into edit document and say edit. And it takes us back to the view we were looking at before. So we're in editing mode. Again, reviewing turns the track changes on. Or you can click on review. And this is where the other uh, track changes option is. So two places here. So one uh, editing and I can go into reviewing uh, and then that will add comments or turn on the commenting and the suggested changes. Or in track changes, I could turn this on for everyone. So if I know I'm going to share this, notice that, that reviewing changes as well. Or it could just be just mine. If I don't need to track other people's changes, um, you can switch that there. I usually leave it on everyone just because if, if that's the goal to track the changes of everybody, uh, then that seems to make sense to me. As you're tracking changes, so this again, just working kind of on your own here. Um, and even if I uh, maybe copy and paste another, so you'll see this is a suggestion to delete something. I'm gonna copy and just enter down here and paste. This is a suggestion to add something um, or if I delete a word, um, so if I wanna change appears to show, you get something sort of like that. Um, comments, so again, if you wanted to comment on something, um, I could just come in here. So if I wanted to uh, highlight this, 
I could right click and make a new comment. And you click that little arrow there. So it puts a comment. Uh, people can also reply to these comments. So you can sort of create a little conversation uh, right here in the document. And then as you go along, um, if or as you get toward the end, so if you're making all of these suggestions here, uh, you can then go in and you can accept changes. So if I like the idea of removing this paragraph, I can click this accept here at the top and it will remove it. So it will delete that. Uh, and then I think this is recording that I uh, put in an enter or return there. So you can go in and you can accept or you can reject. If I don't like this change, if I like the way it was, I could click reject and it will leave that alone and then remove that uh, change there. And if you've got a large enough document, you can use these arrows here to go between um, different suggested changes. And again, this is the only one here. So if I've made one on further down in the document. Now, if I was up here, I could click next and that highlights this one. I click another one, then it jumps down to the bottom here. All right, so that's tracking changes just kind of within uh, one document here. Um, if I wanted to share this with other people, this is where I would use this little share button here at the top. So I would click share. And this again is going to be a lot easier than just emailing a file to people. Um, you can email the file, but then that actually creates a copy on the other person's computer. This way we're working on the same document in the same place. So we don't have to worry about, you know, well, does everybody have the most updated version of this document? And I'm going to click here on uh, where it says people you specify can view. So this is the easiest way. So I could just type in uh, different people here. So I could put in um, Stephanie. I don't know if I can type her name, I got close enough at least. I could select her. And then I could also add, uh, we'll add Melissa to this. I'll just say that uh, and we'll see if they do that. Um, so this is specified people can view. Um, one thing before uh, clicking that, uh, the send here is that right now uh, you see this little pencil with the slash through it. This means that they can only view the file and they can't edit. But if I want them to go in and make changes, like I'm asking them to here, I need to switch this to can edit. Um, and then it, I think it changes this here at the top. Let me see. Yeah. So here it says specify people you specify can view. If I change this to edit. It will say edit. Now I can also. Uh, change this setting right here. So I could click on this and change this instead of specific people, which is right here, I could change this to anyone with the link. And that's where I would then have a link that I could send out to people. And whoever I send that link to would be able to click that link and go in and edit this page. You can also, this is very helpful if you do want to just link to something but not have people edit, uh, this is a good way to sort of host uh, a document that you may want to send out to people and have them click on to download it. Uh, so these are your options here. So anyone with the link, uh, and then of course you can allow editing or turn it off. You can limit this to just people in at MSU with the link. So making sure that they are um, either employees or students here at Mississippi State. I will say I'm not quite certain with the people with existing existing access, uh, I've never really had to use that. So I'm not quite certain what that's there for, but I'm sure that there's a purpose. So the main ones here, anyone with the link, uh, and I really just bounce between those two, anyone with the link or specific people. Uh, and so if you click anyone with the link, I can just show you this. Uh, and this is a nice thing. You can set an expiration date. So if you want you know, to make sure just not out there forever, uh, you can then turn that off here or set an expiration date. And we'll, uh, I'll leave this on specific people so that we'll go back to here. And I think though, if I do anyone with the link and click apply, yeah, I can still use this to send the link to uh, Stephanie and Melissa. So they would be able to open this file and make changes. And I'm going to go ahead and send that to them. 
and we'll see if they pop in here and make any changes. I didn't let them know ahead of time that I was going to do that. So maybe a surprise for them and maybe a surprise for us. Um, so while we're waiting to see if they show up in here, uh, I do want to show you uh, how you can do this in the desktop version. A uh, couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, I could, of course, just go open Word on my computer and do it. Um, but if we're in this here, I can click where it says reviewing and then open this in the desktop app. So there used to be a little link here that says uh, switch to desktop version or something like that. Um, here's Melissa. I can see her making changes in here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead while she's doing that. I'm going to click on reviewing there and go open with desktop app. Uh, it just lets me know that it's going to try to open Word. The all markup shows all of the markups here. Uh, the simple markup is going to assume that the changes are applied, but then it just puts little marks on the side and leaves the comments over here. But then I think the comments stay for. No, they don't. So they go away for all. Uh, so all markup showing everything, uh, changing this to no markup, uh, removes everything and applies all the changes uh, or uh, kind of put that in quotes, applies all the changes. It's they're still there. So if I go back to um, all markup, I would see them. And then original is kind of the opposite where it's going to assume that all none of the changes were made. And so this is what we started with. Uh, the reviewing pane, this is what I was showing over here. So clicking on that uh, just gives you kind of, it pulls out the revisions and lets you know uh, what they were. Um, then you can get some more detailed information there. Uh, so then I, again, was just sort of mentioning, I usually leave it on all markup so I can see all of the changes here. And then turning tracking changes on and off. So um, here, if I were to make, and I'll just make another section bold here. So that's not tracking the changes, but if I turn tracking changes on and make something bold here, then that is going to track that change. So if you want it to follow, you just need to make sure that this is kind of darkened in here. So it's turned on uh, and then it will track those changes. Any questions there? Can you clarify? Um, you said all markup shows every markup on the on the side, like the left side, and then the simple markup shows. Um, okay, and then no markup removes every mark, so it removes all the potential suggestions. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So it, it's it's not really changing the document at all. It's just either showing or hiding the track changes feature. So yeah, in simple markup, it just gives you these little lines down the side to let you know that something changed in that section while tracking changes was turned on. Uh, all markup then shows you those changes. And then no markup just assumes that the changes are applied already and then hides all of the, the markup. That makes sense. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and I would say that like that, uh, those sorts of things, like if I needed to uh, just print a copy of this real quick and I didn't want all of the tracking changes showing up, that's when I would really use this. So if I would go to like no markup, I could then um, do file print and print the print a copy of this right quick without having to accept or reject all the changes or finalize the document if you think of it that way. But you can, if I go to all markup, now I don't have a printer on this computer, so I don't know what we'll see here, but it'll go to PDF. Um, so this would actually print, it would sort of shrink it down on the page, you know, to get the comments and everything in here. Um, but you kind of see what that format would look like. And if I go back to track changes and switch this to simple markup. No, actually, let's go to no markup and file and print. And so that would print just like a regular document. All right, I'm going to close that file 
Uh, and then we'll just say, well, we can close this window too. So uh, I do want to briefly talk about um, OneDrive. And I think uh, if you were in the uh, collaboration workshop uh, last week, I think it was last week, uh, on OneDrive, so if I go in here, uh, now this is not necessarily related to tracking changes, um, but if I scroll down to my document section here, um, if I wanted to share this file, so this is one the one that we were just working on, I could click here and I could click share. Um, sharing it this way does not automatically turn on tracking changes. However, it does keep a revision history. So if I were to share this document this way, so again, um, I just clicked on these three little dots here and went to share. And if I share it with people and give them editing privileges, um, I'm going to jump into a older document. So this is one that we were doing, I think, in the same uh, in that other workshop. So you can see I've got some more comments and things like that. But if I want to go back to the beginning, if I don't like the changes that were made to this or um, for whatever reason, I just want to go back and see where where we started. I can click on so this they keep moving things on me here. Oh, it's up here. Um, so this I click up here where it says save. This is where I can do things like uh, change the file name, change the location. But then down here, I can also click on version history. And this, so this is the current version because um, I haven't made any changes, but I could go back to the previous change here and that actually didn't expand this. More. There we go. So if I expand this, so this is basically I created it. So it was just a blank document. Um, and then this is where I added some text. This is where Stephanie modified some text. This is where some more modifications happen. So you can go back in these chain in these uh, versions here. So if I wanted to start to this first one or go back to this first one, I could then either restore this and that will um, update this to the current version. It will not, I'm pretty sure it will not delete these other versions. So even if I restore this one, that's just another version. So I could still go backwards and uh, get back to the beginning. But then um, oh, I could also save a copy of this. So if I just wanted to have like my first draft, just so that we could have that as a historical document um, and then show how we've modified it as we move along, um, then you can just save copies like that. And then if I go back to the document here, we're back into editing. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to mention with OneDrive is uh, if you're logged into OneDrive on your computer, so it will be updating everything here. And that folder, if I click there and click open folder, this is here in my um, Windows Explorer here. So you'll just have a OneDrive uh, sort of hanging out right here. Um, and if I go down and open up uh, document 22, since we were working on that, then this is doing the same thing. So I just wanted to show you, instead of going through the web version, um, if you open a file from your OneDrive on your computer, it will work that way. Also, if you just do file open from Word here, you can see I can find my other documents. So I wanted to go back to 21. I can click on this and then again, we have all of our options here at the top. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, if you do have questions, I'm going to go back and copy and paste my contact information in the chat uh, is on this page. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let us know. Um, and again, uh, I'll copy and paste this uh, link as well. Uh, this is a link to that libguide where we have our uh, different handouts and tutorials. And if you've got any questions, just let us know and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for coming and have a great afternoon.